Well, I'm here at the 2015 NCHA Futurity and I'm with two Australian competitors who have put a lot of time, effort and money into coming over to the US to compete in the Futurity and have both done extraordinarily well. Peter Schumach and Peter Dunn, congratulations and welcome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So firstly, I'll begin by asking you, what, um, why did you decide to get a horse, have it trained over here and come and compete over in the States? Um, I think, well, five years ago now, I sent a filly over from Australia, um, sent it to Eddie Flynn, um, which was by the horse that I had back home there, and Eddie trained that Mary out for me, and um, we were lucky enough to make the limited non-pro finals that year. Um, so that kind of, yeah, kind of, you know, got the bug to show here at Fort Worth um, with, you know, where the best of the cutters show. So at that time, we, we ended up buying another filly, and um, a yearling, Came back two years later. Eddie trained her again for me. Uh, came back two years later, and we were lucky enough to make the the limited non-pro finals on her again. So, bit by the bug, went and bought another year, like another year in Philly. Um, got her started while I was here when that the big ice storm was on. Um, left with Eddie. Two years later, here we are again, and and yeah, this time was lucky enough to get right through to the non-pro finals as well. So we're going to come back to this story of how you, um, you know, found this this horse that you've just had a lot of success on. But um, you have every time you've come over and competed, you've made the finals, and this time you were reserve limited non pro. How does that feel? Yeah, um, over the moon. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like, you know, to competing here at Fort Worth is something that you know I've always wanted to do, and yeah, so. To, to be able to come and, and climb on a horse that's really well trained, like Eddie's done a super job, like on all three of the horses I've had now. Um, easy horses, get on them, cut clean, you know, do your job and the horses will take take care of the rest. So I'm very, very happy. It says a lot about you as a showman, though, to be so competitive over here when you're not here all year riding. Oh, you know, I show a lot at home. So um, we, we just had a show only three weeks before came over here so I went there and showed four times in the weekend just trying to do the things that we can do right you know good clean cuts and make sure you're quick clean and like I said if the horse is trained right hopefully they will do their job so yeah. So Peter Dunn how about you why did you decide this year to have a horse trained and compete over here? Yeah I suppose we came over two years ago and saw Pete and Peter Ryan's show and sort of thought we could do it and have a go just for the experience and bought a horse and sent it to Gerald Alexander for 12 months and then got tied up with Austin and sent it to him and you know just went on and on and never thinking that we'd probably get here but we did so you know everything's a bonus yeah. How did it feel being a finalist? Well, finalist was good, but the go rounds was a bit nervous, you know. <laughs> yeah, very. Is it a daunting, you know, place to show? Oh, once you get past the line, you're right. You know, it's just the initial lead up to it or build up to it. But yeah. So tell us about your horse and how you found it. Yeah, we found it through Gerald Alexander. Um, actually, it was the day we were to get on the plane. He said, "There's a couple of horses if you want to buy one," and we just went out and bought it. And it's sort of, he organised to pick it up and everything just fell in place, yeah. When did you first get to ride it? Uh, I came over back last year for a couple of weeks and we had three or four rides on it and, yeah, just to see what we thought. And Whether you should continue. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And to organise who it was going to go to and who Gerald thought, who to send it to and he sort of, he recommended Austin and... Yeah. So now, sure, you obviously you have a relationship with Eddie. So, what made you choose Austin? Well, it was mainly Gerald's uh, recommendation, I suppose. You know, they sort of he sort of places horses where he thinks will suit and what train will suit me, and yeah, just uh, it all worked out perfect. So, have you been to Alabama and um, ridden the horse there? Yeah, yeah, we went down. We came over about a week before and. I flew down to Alabama and stayed there for about a week and rode her and travelled back with them and yeah, I lo like I lope her and I probably ride her in the practice pen every second or third day and you know Austin rides her every other day or third day so. 
Did you did you expect to you know come home with a finals jacket? No, no, no. I was thinking if I get through the go rounds, you know, cut clean like Pete said, cut clean and show clean, and hopefully the horse does the rest. So. so how about you, Shui? Do you think it's different to show here than anywhere else? I, I don't think so. I, um, you know, it's sure competitive back home in Australia showing at the moment that we've got a lot of really good non-pros and a lot of really good trainers there um, obviously the numbers here is it's just a numbers deal like if I, if I was to say for example we've got 10 you know really top-notch non-pros at home there's a hundred here you know it's just it's just purely a numbers game and but it to me it doesn't matter if if, if you lay down a, a nice neat correct run you do your things right it doesn't matter if it's a 72, 73 in Sydney, Australia or Fort Worth, Texas. It's it's still judged under the same rules and, you know, you've just got to go and, and do do your job and, and hope the horse do, does theirs. So now the, the mare that you got reserve on here, um, tell us the story of how you found it because it wasn't kind of in cutting circles, was it? Oh, she's, um, I was really interested in a horse by Purdy Boy Flash, um, a horse that Jack Wagner had bred. Um, the year before I'd looked for a stud colt by him, couldn't really find one to take home to Australia that was would suit our like our industry back there with the camp drafting side of things as well. Um, I ended up buying a, another horse for a stud horse, came back and said to my wife, look I'm going to go and buy a Purdy Boy Flash filly. Jumped on the internet, found this filly in, up in Oklahoma. so. Um, two years ago, um, Eddie had a lay day, wasn't going to help anybody during the futurity on that particular day. So he jumped in the truck and drove six hours and bought this little filly off um, Lewis Constanza um, in Oklahoma. Bought her home and, yeah, that's when the big ice storm hit there two years ago and Eddie was stuck in town, I was stuck out at the ranch. So um, by the time he got home, I'd had four rides on her. So, yeah. So you've obviously added a lot of value to this horse now. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What do you... Yeah, no, she's a nice mare, really nice. Very happy with her. So, what are your plans now? Are you, what are you going to do with your horse? Um, I don't know. It's kind of up in the up in the air at the moment. But I'd really like to keep her, keep her, and maybe come back over the you know the next twelve months. Show her um, the Super Stakes, maybe the Bi, the Derby. Um, just got to convince my wife that that she can do without me at home for a, a little bit of time, but. Yeah, no, hopefully, um, but yeah, I, you know, I don't really want to sell her. It's not like she owes me a lot of money, so um, it would be good to be able to keep her and, you know, maybe maybe get an embryo out of her this year and or early next year and take it home. Yeah, so. Yeah. How about you, Peter? What are your plans now? Yeah, we'll hopefully sell our filly here at the at the show, and then whether we um, get into another one or you know. Will you do it again? Oh, I think I'd like to, yeah, you know, maybe not next year, maybe the year after, but yeah, one day we'll probably come back, yeah. So what advice would you have um, to somebody who's in Australia or Brazil or Canada or somewhere and thinking about, you know, competing here, um, what would you say, what have you learned about this process? Oh, well, for, you know, my, my feeling is that you've, you've got to find a, a trainer that, that you trust, you believe in their program. Um, you know, you can see the results that they've had with with their previous non-pro riders and um, and such. Um, yeah, and then you've got to you've got to trust in what they're telling you. You know, where your horse is up to, is it gonna is it gonna suit you? And you've just got to roll with um, roll with that. When you're on the other side of the world, you can't do anything but trust trust that your trainer. So um, obviously, very important to find somebody that's you know, it's got your um, best interest at heart as well. Yeah. How about you, Peter? Any any advice? Yeah, no, that's about it. Yeah, you've just got to trust them, and hopefully, you know, if you get a, an established trainer, well, you know, they they've got a reputation, and that's why they've got a reputation. So. And I mean, I know you're saying really the standard is the same. There's just it's a numbers game, but there's obviously something about some excitement or something that you like to be over here to to compete. Can you describe what it is? I don't know. I guess for me, it's it's. Um, I remember um, Sean Flynn in an interview when he won the Derby. He said, "When we were kids, we dream of showing that in arena." Okay. 
kind of the ultimate. What about you, Peter? It's it's like you know, it's like the Melbourne Cup of cutting. So, you know, you've got to go once. Yeah. yeah. And you guys are returning home victorious. Couldn't get better, could it? No, that's right. You know, we've done well, and you know, could have gone the other way, but. Yeah, if you don't have a go, well, you'll never know, you know. And and finally, you know, it's a tricky time because the exchange rate, no matter which country you're from, you know, the the US dollar is pretty strong. Is there is there any advice or you just gotta you just gotta take that hurt if you're gonna take this on? Grin and bear it. (laughs) (laughs) Just grin and bear it. Suck it up. (laughs) It'll leverage it. It'll leverage it. Well yeah, and like you've done well with your horses, so hopefully that'll you know when you take your money home, yeah, you you know. The exchange yeah. might, rate might be the other way and you, you pick it up. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, guys. Uh, really appreciate it and um, best of luck for future years and, and what you're going to continue to do with these horses. Yep. Thank you. No worries. Okay. Thanks.